Uh, today we're here with our good friend, the drawer, Tom Saparita. Uh, Tom, could you talk us through and uh, a number of you, the images that you have here that you've drawn and maybe talk about um, the process, how they, these images were made, and then secondly, kind of how it helped you deal with some emotions you might have, might have been feeling at the time. Sure. Um, this first one is called Made to Suffer, and um, <clears throat> all of these drawings are uh, Sharpie on just plain white paper. Um, they were not, uh, there was no penciling in before. I would say 99% of the time I just start going based on how I feel. Um, for this particular one, um, it's a, like a humanoid figure with a very pronounced spine um, looking up towards the sky with his, uh, his mouth open. And it's actually kind of a bit of a bizarre self-portrait. Um, and it's a, about uh, me dealing with depression. And what I've taken, actually, I did take an idea from Shel Silverstein, which is the the mouth that I gave myself. Um, it, it's uh, actually drawn pretty much exactly like the mouth from this uh, Shel Silverstein poem called uh, Lazy Jane, where she just waits for water uh, to f rain from the sky and go into her mouth because she's thirsty. Um, and the reason why I decided to take that is because uh, I thought that um, I had been dealing with depression for some time and I was like, wow, I need to actually take some steps to manage this and get it under control. I can't just wait for it to get better because that won't ever happen. Um, so this piece actually was kind of inspirational for me to do that. Um, when I finished it, I was like, yeah, all right, now I'm going to have to turn some things around. Um, and I did. <laughs> and, and did the drawing and sort of doing that, did the process of making it real on paper, did that make the feelings you were undergoing more real for you and sort of more made you more able to be able to deal with them yeah it's like it's like how some people say uh if you feel a certain way maybe write a letter to yourself and by the time you're done writing it you you have reflected on how you're feeling and you might have a clearer idea of what the next steps are to do and you might may have changed your mind and for me drawing is uh it's very much so like that and since i i rarely ever do multiple takes of something it's quite often exactly how i'm feeling in the moment and uh, if i get it done a drawing done in 10 minutes then that is as long as <laughs> then normally i've kind of uh cycled an emotion out of me in 10 minutes and reflected on it for that long sometimes drawings will take a couple days um and it'll still all be one take, but I'll just put it aside and just go, this is a little too much for me to to handle with right now. Um, so if things take a longer time to reflect on them, the drawing will take longer to do. Um, so this is just, it's like doing a journal. Great. Let's see uh, number two. Could you introduce it and describe it? Sure. Yeah. This is called The Book of Love, and it's um, <clears throat> kind of a ghost type figure, like a classic kind of ghost shape. Um holding a book in one hand and with the other hand uh, pointing a finger up as if to kind of dictate something to the audience. He's looking right at us. Um, and I purposefully drew the eyes of this character to be a little bit sad, but at the same time, he's got a smirk going on. Like, you know, maybe this guy's read something in this book of love that is really teaching him something about being in a relationship and it's actually, I wrote this um, at a time where I was like kind of really missing <laughs> the, uh, this one woman. And I was like, man, I don't know if I've ever been in love. I don't know what, I'm not sure how that feels, but I really do miss this person. Um, and I listened a lot to this magnetic field song, The Book of Love. I listened to it like 20 or 30 times in a row and drew this uh, on a commute. Um, to work and it was just like kind of it was weird it kind of set the mood for the day I mean it did allow me to clear up some thoughts but it was a that was a really cool experience 
Was there a reason you picked the ghost form? Yeah, I felt like if I had kind of drawn myself um, there, it wouldn't really mean so much. To me, it was like, I'm drawing how I, how I felt in the past, but re or how I feel now, reflecting on myself in the past. So to me, it was like, I'm 99% sure I'm not getting back together with this woman. So if anything, it's kind of like a ghost. Like it's just something that's, it happened, but it's not really there anymore. And how about the extended finger on the hand? Sure, the extended finger um, is actually, it's actually more like talking to myself. Hey, Tom, here's something that you could learn from uh, this book of love. And I was kind of running with the metaphor from the Magnetic Field song, which is about basically all the things that could be in a book of love um, like where there could be music in it, there could be whatever. Um, and I was like, you know what, maybe I should take a page from that book and listen to this guy, this guy actually talk about it. Do you think you learned a lesson after drawing this? I definitely learned that I need to kind of not be so hasty in relationships. And I think part of that was I listened to the song 30 times and it's not really super elaborate. I was like, wow, you know, spent a lot of time on it um, compared to how <laughs> detailed it is. And I was like, wow, you know, I wish I had, before I had made some decisions in that relationship, had maybe taken <laughs> just as much time uh, thinking, thinking about it as I did drawing this. On a similar level, I often find myself, if I have a relationship that goes poorly, I seem to think about it a lot more after the fact and what I did wrong and then during the fact when I could have done something about it. Yeah, it's a shame when that happens. Uh, now we're going to have a tears break. Yeah. <laughs> could we go to number three, please? Sure, yeah. Um, this is uh, kind of a more straightforward self-portrait if you can say that because um, I actually kind of tried to draw myself or at least the nose um, and uh, it's my neck basically stretching a long distance from kind of a triangular based body that's going off the page and my eyes are closed and I'm blowing into a saxophone and I'm basically the force of blowing into that is making my the back of my head explode. <laughs> so it's, uh, there's definitely a certain amount of action going on in this one. Um, and uh, I drew this, I did draw this for someone who I knew played the saxophone, but I drew this because um, I don't play the saxophone, but I, I've said, anytime I've seen someone play it, their eyes are closed. So I drew my eyes closed in it. To me, it was like, wow, you know, maybe this is something where you focus so much and you put so much into it that you kind of stretch yourself to the limit. And I know that from playing other instruments that that can be true. So I just tried to kind of put the feelings that I would have, like if I played the guitar and was really struggling learning something or wanted to express myself in that way. And I tried to just basically make it into what the saxophone would be like. And since the saxophone, you're like puffing your cheeks out and blowing into something to me I was like well sometimes when I play the guitar I get this like resistance playing it so I made the guy's head explode because I was just like you know like if there was something that I was going to blow up if I was playing the guitar it'd probably be like my hands or something <laughs> so to me this is uh, some guy who's just a, it's a sense of like release it's like I've really worked my butt off and <laughs> I'm expressing myself and just there we go was there a specific incident, a feeling, uh, or maybe a song even, given that it's musical, that inspired this? This one I actually didn't write to a song. I write, I mean, uh, sorry, draw to a song. I actually draw a lot um, to song. But um, this one was more just, uh, I knew uh, this was specifically for a person. I knew that they played an instrument, and I was like, wow, I really just want to, get that feeling down that the kind of the rush um the tension and the release of playing music because that's really what i think it's about is I, I don't think you can really properly play music without 
it being cathartic in some sense. And do you find, uh, given that you studied uh, music at college, do you find you have the same kind of cathartic release both with playing music and with drawing? It's similar. Um, drawing is is definitely different because you can kind of see your mind on a page afterwards. Once you play something, unless you recorded it, it's done and it's just gone. Um, so I think music is a little bit uh, more short term in terms of what you get out of it. Um, and drawing kind of seems to stick around. And then based on that, do you have this thing where if you're dealing with a particularly acute emotion and you're feeling a little bit down, do you find it's not only the drawing process that's important to you, but also the, the revisiting the actual image? Yeah, yeah. When I was uh, taking photos of some of these drawings um, to try and maybe piece together a book, I was like, oh man, I remember that exact feeling. Um, and it was kind of, at some points I was like, geez, I can't believe I drew that. Like, I can't believe I, I was feeling that way. Um, so it is kind of, it lasts. <laughs> and certainly revisiting an image, I, th I think to me, it has more of an effect on me than a sound. Uh, can we see the next image, please? Sure. Uh, could you please describe this image and uh, what it means to you? Sure. This, um, this I actually don't remember the name of this piece. Uh, this is kind of like an Al Hirschfeld type drawing where it's kind of just simple uh, black on white, um, not a, like a, the bust of someone basically, and it's connected lines and a lot of negative space to <clears throat> kind of fill in the rest. And so what this is is a, a guy with a bit of a, I guess a bit of a crooked nose and uh, some kind of very uh, small eyes. Uh, looking over his shoulder and really all that you see of the shoulder is one swoop and his collar is another uh, another two lines and um, there's a lot of negative space like I didn't even draw his jaw I didn't draw the back of his head or his forehead um, or really any of the sides of his head I just drew his chin um, and he's looking over his shoulder and it was this was I remember <laughs> feeling a lot of feeling that I was holding on to the past a little bit too much and that it was I was kind of like letting it sneak up on me and constantly re remind me uh, whether how accurately or inaccurately it was like remind me of oh man you you you're such like a, a dumb guy <laughs> which is kind of like an OCD thing to do is you can't let go of certain thoughts or it's a lot harder to and so for this one I thought it was really important to kind of draw someone who wasn't fully there because I didn't think that I could ever really fully be myself if I was constantly quote looking over my shoulder and letting the past kind of dictate the present and kind of given what you've been saying it seems that there's competing things where the him looking over his shoulder reminds you of yourself and something that maybe you want to let go of but then you also draw it very sparsely so it's almost like you're both reminding yourself by the way he looks it over his shoulder but then you're also trying to forget by drawing it less there's less to it than some of the other ones oh certainly i when i drew this i was like you know like almost kind of like forget this i just wanted to get this drawing to get over with because i want to also move on there was I did it really quickly too. this one. This was like, this is one of those ones where it was, there was so much relief in realizing that I need to just kind of tell myself, all right, Tom, like, calm down. You weren't that dumb when you were younger. And like, any mistakes you made weren't as huge as you're making them be in your mind. And that's okay. Like, that's a good thing. That's a good thing to realize. And so I just kind of drew it and got rid of it. And that was like, I just didn't want to get super involved in making this drawing because I didn't want it to really have to do with me right now. I wanted it to have to be like a, kind of a reminder of like how I was then, but also like forget it as well. <laughs> yeah. And, and then along that lines, um, 
would this be something that you would have liked to have posted somewhere, like say in your room or your or your house, where it can be both a reminder of a way that you don't want to be? You know what I mean? Like so, it's both there, which is a reminder, but it's also trying to push you away from what you were. I <clears throat> I don't think I would want to hang this up in my own home. Uh, maybe. Maybe in like a hallway. <laughs> if it were going to be anywhere. Just so it's like, alright, I'm going to pass by it. Because like, you're not really ever hanging out in the hallway. You're just kind of using it to get from point A to point B, which is kind of what this is for. Could you talk about, you said that this was inspired by Al Hirschfeld. Can you talk about why um, the role of artistic inspirations for you, how they play in your art? Well, this this is kind of someone actually pointed out to me after the fact that it looks like an Al Hirschfeld. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, it does. Um, but to me, the, the artistic inspiration, I think, came... Um, I actually probably took probably subconsciously a good amount of inspiration from him, but I also definitely took some from... Uh, like a Picasso type thing, like the eyes off the head and it's all kind of a weird way to look at a certain person. Um, it's, I don't know, it's just very weird. I I don't really know where in the moment I, I took any inspiration from for this, but there's no doubt that Al Hirschfeld snuck into my head without me realizing it. Awesome. Could you go into the next one, please? Sure, yeah. Oh, and so could you please describe this image and uh, the process of making it and any emotions it it uh, instills in you? Sure. Um, this was for a, a challenge that was on Twitter where someone had, it was, I forget the name of the hashtag, but it was like Mocha Day Challenge or something. And it's like an abbreviation for making a character or something and you have to draw every day. And this was, I think I only did two things for that challenge ever, but this was draw some sort of a robot. So this is kind of like a trash can bodied robot with uh, just kind of supposed to be like cylindrical, uh, like aluminum legs, I guess. And the only other feature of it, really like the defining feature is this bizarre swivel periscope attached to the top with a human eye through the glass. Um, and it's kind of supposed to be like me, like, hey, I'm just I uh, I was like I'll draw a robot that's me, but like not super functional. And I think this kind of came at a time where I was feeling a bit useless. Um, I know that this was like towards the end of the summer, and during the summer I was working like every day, and I think it really just wore me down. And I finally started having a day or two off here and there. And I kind of felt like really lazy during that time and a bit useless. And I was like, man, what are these drawings ever going to amount to? What am I doing for work? Like, how am I going to compensate for the shift in hours due to the change in season? And like, I just kind of felt like a useless robot, like a robot that can just look on and can take no part in what's in its future. Can you talk about the uh, the eye in it? Like, what's what's the role of that? The role of that is is supposed to be representative of the only real function of the robot, which I guess the also the also the other function is that it has legs and can walk. So that's kind of a like a nice positive thing, I guess. It can keep walking forward, but the role of the eye is that's really its primary function is just to look and. Uh, for me, I know I purposely drew the eye to be a, like have a little bit of a desperate <laughs> look in it, like very wide-eyed and like, uh-oh, <laughs> like you know. So maybe it's like, great, here comes the future, um, and that's kind of how it, certainly how I was feeling when I drew it. So the eye was basically just kind of supposed to represent how useless I am, other than being able to see. Could you talk about that? It seems like there is this kind of recurring theme in your work that you have not human um, entities depicted, does that help you explore your emotions because it's exploring them through something that's a little bit more distant from who you are as a human being? Yeah, if, if I really went and tried to draw like 
the human form um, exactly as is, I think it would it, it, it wouldn't really cut it for me. Um, I don't. I, I really don't also not have a ton of practice drawing people like exactly as they look. It's usually like a bit of a more cartoonish background. But drawing something that's not human or like only half human, uh, to me it helps kind of physicalize an emotion. So uh, before, if you know, it's so much release that your head is exploding or you're looking at, you're feeling kind of guilt or regret over a relationship so you're more of a ghost or you're just waiting for things to change so much so that you're not taking action and then you can see your spine and you can see the outlines of bones in your body I mean it's like somewhat human but it's not quite because it's to me it's it's a lot easier um, to depict how I'm feeling that way otherwise I'm probably a little bit more uh, confined to what the actual human body is capable of. Great. Could you go on to the uh, next one? Sure. Could you please describe this image and maybe the, the process of making it and how it made you feel at the time and maybe still feel today? Yeah. Um, this one's kind of detailed, I guess. Um, it's a human brain, a profile of a human brain. Um <clears throat> that I just kind of found an image online of a brain and I just eyeballed it and drew it in one shot and it took a long time to draw that um, and underneath it is kind of a split open head the brain is hovering over this head and the head is uh, also in a profile view but the eyes are com like completely in the wrong part of the head same with uh, the ear and the eyes are looking in different directions with different kind of the one on the left is looking up as if to be a little bit surprised and the one on the right is looking uh, kind of down as if to be really sad and attached to it is a warped hand with fingers of different sizes um, not proportional <laughs> sizes I'd say and um, this uh, was for at the time, it was like mental health awareness week or something. And I wanted to draw something that was reflective of how much chaos can kind of go on in your head if you have like OCD or if you have depression. And when you're dealing with something that isn't really easy to see, um, and it's really something that you feel, uh, I wanted to draw something that was <laughs> could represent that. That is, it's like, hey, I want you to see depression, and I want you to see how bad it can be sometimes. And uh, yeah, when I I was really hesitant to share this, and when I did, uh, someone was like, "Oh, is this a cry for help?" And I was like, I, "Like, I didn't want to say yeah, so I didn't." Um, but uh, it was a. Uh, especially since that remark was kind of off the cuff. I was, like, not expecting it at all. Um, but I I do really think that I did a... At least in this one, I feel like I did a decent job <laughs> depicting it. Could you talk about how you made the brain part, which looks to me like the most detailed, the most complicated and time-consuming part of the, of the drawing? Yeah, I... So the technique I use when I'm, like, trying to mimic... Uh, draw something, like that looks very realistic is I'll draw the outline of it first. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes I won't even look at the page and I'll just keep an eye on the draw on the image that I'm copying. Um, uh, or you can kind of bounce back and forth. I think it's a, pr a fairly uh, common technique to do. I, I, I didn't learn it in a class. I actually learned it from uh, someone at one of my jobs was like, oh yeah, I'm taking an art class and we do this now in it. And I'm like, cool, I'll try it. And so I just started kind of trying it without ever really knowing. I might even be doing it wrong. I don't know. But I I kind of just kept an eye on the brain and a half an eye on the paper as I traced an outline of the brain. And then I looked, what I do sometimes is I look for the... Um, since I'm drawing in black and white, is I look for uh, the most noticeable changes in shades or in darkness. 
Um, so there are parts that have thicker black lines and that's because I would actually bl blur my eyes looking at the photo and I would go, all right, there's this shape of darkness right here and that there, let me get that down first and that will dictate the contours of everything around it because everything around it has to eventually curve into that crevice that's making it dark. Um, and so that, I actually blur my eyes a lot when I'm looking at something to <clears throat> get a better sense of the shapes it's composed of um, and the shades and changes in light that are in it. So that was like a kind of a big part of it was just, <laughs> was just trying to get the overall boundaries of it and then make it a little bit more abstract by finding out where the light falls on it and then going in and trying to properly draw the contours of it. Can you talk about the profile on the far left of the nose and the mouth? Oh yeah, I always, I draw noses first a lot. And I think some of that's because I, re I think I have a big nose and I can't get over it and I haven't been able to get over it for so long. Um, and I, I tend to just draw the nose first because to me that's the nose and the mouth. That's where I look at when I talk to people. A lot of times I'm not looking them in the eye. I'm looking them right at the mouth or on their, at their nose. Um, I don't think anyone's noticed yet. Um, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, but to me it's like, all right, if my brain wanders, at least maybe I can remember the words that their mouth was forming or I'm looking at their nose and going, damn, that's a nice nose. <laughs> I wish I had that nose. Um, so that's kind of where I started with it. And I, I drew the mouth a little bit agape because I thought that it was kind of the proper, proper way to draw it for someone who's in a little bit of pain. Um, is they're just kind of tr can moan, just to have, they have to let out the pain somehow. When the person saw, who saw this said that uh, they thought it could be a cry for help, how did that make you feel when they said that? I was scared when they said that. I kind of thought, oh crap, well, this person's going to think I'm <clears throat> really like unstable or something, and I don't think that's the case. But it's, uh, I, I was scared because there's such a stigma around mental health. And if you mention you have an issue, I mean, people kind of look at you weird. Or part of it can be that you think people are looking at you differently. And so it's, it's scary. It's never easy admitting to something like that. So I, I just kind of lied and was like, no, I did this purely for fun. <laughs> um... Just because, yeah, I didn't want to be judged. Can you talk, maybe based on all your all of your images and all your previous work drawing, can you talk about the relationship between drawing and art with um, your emotional exploration and learning about it? Yeah, when I draw, um, I, te I tend to draw the most when I'm feeling some sort of feeling that I cannot quite uh, deal with. <laughs> um, so to me, for me, drawing is, is just, it's like journaling. It's a, ref it's a time to reflect. And I think reflection is really necessary for certain people. Um, <clears throat> and I think I'm one of those people. Um, so for me, it's like drawing is, it's like writing in a diary. And I've tried writing journal entries but then I find that I'll just repeat themes over and over and it doesn't really get uh, get the feeling out of me it doesn't really help me process it what it does is it helps me writing helps me like linger on something more because then I see it in words and then I go oh, that's a strong word you're doing that but when there's no words on a, on paper and it's just an image and it might not be the exact image you have in your head it might be so close then you start to realize, well, it's not even the exact image I had in my head. So there's that level of uncertainty in my own drawings. So there's got to be that level of uncertainty just in life. So things aren't always going to be the way they are. I tend to really always think about like, oh, this sucks and it's going to suck for forever. Great. And it's nice when you remind yourself uh, during your reflection that this is something not permanent 
that this is something that you can draw it might not be exactly how you feel because how you feel is is changing it's changing but it's the essence of what how i felt and it's a nice reminder to see that uh i did something that i i consider constructive <clears throat> with those emotions and sort of along that lines the idea that you draw your emotions and they depict them at a certain time. Does the idea that you can always redraw your emotions, does that hold an appeal to you to be able to maybe work your way out of a negative emo emotion? I try not to um, draw <clears throat> this the same exact thing over and over again. Most of my drawings are pretty different. <laughs> um, they might share themes, but they're not gonna actually look exactly the same uh or have the same content so to me it's nice to not revisit certain emotions because certain things i don't want to revisit and i don't think it's healthy to can you talk about that your name is tom mm -hmm. and that you uh label your drawings with the word tam yeah tam um was something in college where as a joke, I tried to spell Tom differently and I put an accent. I spelled it T-A-M-B and I put an accent over the A and someone was like, oh, Tam. And I was like, darn, I thought I, I thought for sure that you would pronounce this Tom. Um, and I kind of, it was a nickname for like a month, maybe two. And like, then I kind of forgot about it, but I started using it for drawings kind of as a mask because there is that fear, um, like I mentioned before, like of being judged for your expressing yourself and like, oh, I thought this was a cry for help. And I kind of didn't want it associated with Tom. I wanted it more associated with Tam. Or if I do something that was really silly and off the wall, and even if it was super joyous and silly, if there was something that I thought might reflect on my character, not poorly, but um, could be perceived as something negative. I didn't want my name to be associated with it. And I wasn't comfortable with it. I, I don't introduce myself as an illustrator to people. I don't say that that's what I do. It's just, it is what I do. <laughs> I'm just not comfortable saying that. Was it an important step for you to even label your drawings with Tam and on a similar note, do you think in the future you'll ever go to the your real name, Tom? It was really important to, to sign my work, Tam, because it was freeing. It was, I can draw whatever I want and someone might never ever put a real face or name to the drawing. It's, they're just gonna have this fake thing. This guy could be from Portugal, he could be from Antarctica. We have, I have no idea. Um, so that was very freeing in that sense to be able to just say I'm this guy I'm whatever I don't have to worry about people judging me I don't have to worry about if this totally is a terrible drawing because Tam made it not necessarily Tom <laughs> and I don't know if I'm going to embrace Tom down the line I think there was there was definitely a time where I was like man, maybe I should have people just call me Tam in conversation and just go by Tam because it, it started to feel more honest. Um, so I don't know. Either I'm going to keep keep it separate for a little bit of security or I'm going to stop and sign my name or not have people call me Tom and have them call me Tam. Um, do you think that these images are the most true expression of who you are as a human being yeah i do um sometimes they might seem like i'm dwelling on a bad thought but then i kind of realize that that's the way i've kind of always been is very very reflective very somber and i know some people know me as kind of like a class clown which i won <laughs> in high i don't know if i won it in high school but that's what i got in high school for a superlative uh, that was like equal parts being very happy and equal parts being really sad and just trying to make the most out of these feelings that I didn't know how to deal with. Um, 
and now I forget the question. What was it? It was the most true expression of yourself yeah. is through these drawings. Oh, then yes, yeah, that's it. I got really lost in my thinking about high school just there. <laughs> okay, Tom, if uh, other people want to see other parts of your work, uh, do you have a website? Yeah, I do. Um, I have a website where I'm putting up some web development work and drawings and some links to music. It's called imtam.com. It's I A M T A M B.com. Or you can also find me uh, on Twitter at, uh, at J U M B L E D B U T T S. Yeah. So great. So, and again, the website's www.iamtamb.com. Yeah. Tom, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Dina.